Hey guys, I have a lot to talk about today, so let's just jump right into it. Hey guys, Laura here from What Laura Likes. I'm so excited. I feel like I have taken a break since Ryan's gotten back, and here I am finally making a new video. I've missed you guys, and I just want you to know you've been on my heart, you've been in my prayers, and I'm so excited to kind of share with you today some new things I've found, some new prayers, a new show. I do want to say that I'm going to share my favorite TV show, the one I think that every single Christian should watch at the end, so be sure to stick to, stay tuned, and I'm going to do my best to be brief and kind of just touch on all these different um, topics that I want to talk about. I am doing the Divine Mercy Novena. So today is day four, so if you haven't started, you could totally just jump in now because I think that every time we pray the Divine Mercy Chapel it is so, so powerful. And you guys, I have such a strong, strong feeling that in terms of this COVID-19 and things, we could really pray on this Sunday, on Divine Mercy Sunday, and just ask him for his mercy. And he, this day is so incredibly powerful. I really... I, I will put links below, but I really pray that you look into what Divine Mercy Sunday is, and I think there's an indulgence, if I'm not mistaken, and just, I know everything's indulged right now because of the COVID-19, but still, just, um, it's a really, really beautiful Sunday, and the Divine Mercy hours from 3 to 4 o'clock every afternoon, and then this Sunday is also set aside for Jesus is divine mercy. I think God in general is mercy and justice and so there's these two sides to God that we need to keep in mind at all times and um, don't let one of them become like outweigh the other. I use the Pray app so I will link that down below. Novena means nine so there's nine days of prayer continuously and then typically you have an intention but for the divine mercy one I didn't see a place to pray an intention so I'm just praying along with it. So speaking of novenas, you guys probably know that I really enjoy praying the rosary novena, the 54 day rosary novena. This is not for the faint of heart, but it is an amazing way to get involved with praying the rosary daily. And I'm going to touch on that in a few minutes, but you really, really want to get to a place where you're praying the rosary daily. And the 54 day rosary novena, I just want to tell you a little bit about the background, because um, I don't think I've really touched on this yet. but there was a little girl named um, Fortuna Agrelli, and she was enduring dreadful sufferings and torturous cramps for 13 months. And they, her and her family had been praying novenas of rosaries to Our Lady of the Rosary. And she was actually blessed with an apparition on March 3rd. And I want to read, and this is um, 1884. And so I want to read to you the apparition because it's really beautiful. It says, Mary, sitting upon a high throne, surrounded by luminous figures, held the divine child on her lap, and in her hand a rosary. The Virgin Mother and the Holy Infant were clad in gold embroidered garments. They were accompanied by St. Dominic and St. Catherine of Siena. The throne was profusely decorated with flowers. The beauty of Our Lady was marvelous. And so she's looking down upon Fortuna and, you know, with maternal tenderness and the little girl says, Queen of the Holy Rosary, be gracious to me. Restore me to health. I've already prayed to thee in a novena, O Mary, but have not yet experienced thy aid. I am so anxious to be cured. And then the Blessed Virgin says, Child, thou hast invoked me by various titles and hast always obtained favors from me. Now, since thou hast called me by that title so pleasing to me, Queen of the Holy Rosary, I can no longer, longer refuse the favor thou dost petition. For this name is most precious and dear to me. Make three novenas, and thou shalt obtain all. And then she appeared a little bit, it looks, sounds like at another time, and said, Whoever desires to obtain favors from me should make three novenas of the prayers of the rosary and three novenas in thanksgiving. And so that's how this 54-day rosary novena works. The first 27 days, so it's three novenas of nine each, and the, the book that I have leaves out the Luminous Mysteries, and so you just do Joyful, Sorrowful, Glorious, and so three of those equal one Novena, and so you do three in Thanksgiving, which is 27 days, and then three, I mean, three in Petition, and three in Thanksgiving. It's a laborious Novena, but a Novena of love. You who are sincere will not find it too difficult if you really wish to obtain your request. Should you not obtain the favor you seek, be assured that the Rosary Queen 
who knows what each one stands most in need of, has heard your prayer. You will not have prayed in vain. No prayer ever went unheard, and our Blessed Lady has never been known to fail. So my first 54-day ros rosary novena was for the conversion or reversion, however you want to phrase it, of my sister. Now, this hasn't necessarily taken place that I know of. It's not like my sister's back at church, but I trust that Mary heard my prayer and that God's timing is not our timing, and there is just a reason for everything. The second one I'm just now finishing in the next few days is was for the virtue of meekness, and I have definitely felt this change immediately. Mary has answered my prayers and she answered them very quickly. All of a sudden I found myself being able to pause. I found myself growing in humility, being able to let others talk to me without like getting defensive. Um, I found myself having more patience. I, my um, like PMS has been a lot, sorry if that's TMI for any men watching, but you know, like we all know, women get PMS, right? And it's been a lot less volatile. And it's just been so beautiful. So you can pray for yourself, you can pray for others. It's definitely a labor of love, but it is so, so worth it. And so that's what a 54 rosary, day rosary novena is. Heather at A Catholic Mom's Life has the first 27 days covered because she has um, all of them in petition. And then I'm working on getting all of the Thanksgiving out. I do have the sorrowful in Thanksgiving already done, and I'm gonna be working on in the next couple weeks getting the joyful and the glorious done as well. So that way between the two of us, you can get, if you need to have someone to pray along with, sometimes we need to like multitask unfortunately while we're praying and that's okay. And that leads me to the next topic, which I'm so excited about. So I have this little booklet. Let me know if you guys have this little booklet. The very beginning talks about the um, St. Bridget of Sweden and the 15 prayers of St. Bridget, and I had never really looked at them. I think once in co the confessional line I started praying it, but I had never really like prayed it all the way through, and I was like, oh my gosh, who's going to do this daily for a year? But on Good Friday, I don't know what made me decide that I wanted to start this devotion, or at least give it a try, but I found an audio. It's so beautiful. I'm going to put it down below. It's a meditation on the Passion, but it's different than Stations of the Cross. It's different from the Sorrowful Mysteries. It's beautiful. And the way these the, this YouTube channel put it out, her voice is so soothing, the music, it's just beautiful, the imagery. And um, I was bawling the first time I did this. It's very convicting, but not in a bad way. So St. Bridget was very into the passion of, of Jesus. At 10, she had a vision of our Lord nailed to the cross and covered with blood and wounds. Um, she heard a voice saying, look upon me, my daughter. And she said, oh dear, oh dear Lord, said St. Bridget, who has treated you so cruelly? Our Lord replied, those who despise me and are insensible to my love for them. And so then she did marry at 15 and she had eight children. One of her daughters became St. Catherine of Sweden. At one point, Jesus uh, appeared to her, this is in the 1300s, and he said, I received 5,480 blows on my body. If you wish to honor them in some way, say 15 Our Fathers and 15 Hail Marys with the following prayers, which he taught her for a whole year. When the year is up, you will have honored each one of my wounds. You guys, this is so powerful. This is so powerful to think that every single time you say the 15 Our Fathers or the 15 Hail Marys along with the additional prayers and, and you do this for 365 days, you will have honored every single one of Jesus' wounds that he received and it's just, oh, it's so powerful. There are some incredible promises that come along with this. I don't want anyone to start a devotion based on promises. But I'm just going to say that they're just like a benefit and, and they haven't been officially approved. So it says, um, the 21 St. Bridget promises while traditionally associated with the St. Bridget prayers are not covered by an imprimatur. In January of 15, 1954, the Holy Office issued a warning that the supernatural origin of these promises has not been proven. I just encourage you to pull up the video um, and pray it. Pray it while you're doing the laundry. Pray it while you're vac vacuuming. I offer my domestic duties to the Lord while I pray 
the St. Bridget prayers, and it is a very beautiful coming together of the domestic church and my vocation while well, honoring what God has done. And I come away from this prayer in particular full of peace and contemplation. And so if you haven't, just pray this, give it a try. If you have, if you have made it through the year, let me know. I've also heard there's a 12 year um, St. Bridget prayer and again crazy promises but uh start with this start with this and see how you do and you know the thing is even if you don't do it for a whole year if you continue for 365 days like just keep track and pray it for 365 days you have honored every single one of jesus's wounds and we love jesus right how could we do anything oh my gosh better than that okay the next thing i want to talk about which i've already talked about a little bit is my husband and I started our consecration to St. Joseph. We are on day, what are we on? I think we're on day three today. And it's good. It's, um, it's pretty simple. So it depends like where you are in your faith walk. If you are still kind of discovering some of the basics of Catholicism, whether you're a convert or you're just a cradle Catholic like myself who kind of is on the journey and you're just wanting to know more about St. Joseph, this is really good. Definitely worth it to build up to your consecration. Um, I love St. Joseph. Ryan loves St. Joseph. It's just, it was a natural thing for us to do together. I think it'd be beautiful for everybody to do it with their spouses. Okay, so to summarize, every single day I have four things I'm doing. I'm praying my 54 day rosary novena. I am praying the St. Bridget prayers. I'm praying the divine mercy novena, and I am doing the consecration to St. Joseph. Now, obviously some things are gonna fall off, like my 54 day rosary novena is almost done, so I will go back to praying a normal rosary after that, but I will still continue to do that every day. The St. Bridget prayers aren't gonna stop anytime soon. The Divine Mercy um, novena is gonna be over, but I do have a goal to pray the Divine Mercy Chapel at three o'clock every day, and most days I succeed. And then the consecration will of course end when that ends, and I will just, and that for now until I find some other kind of spiritual reading to do. Um, in the mornings, I do try to attend live mass with my priest at 7.30 every morning. I didn't make it today, but I, if I don't make it, I still do the readings and try to have a few minutes to meditate on them to kind of process through. I really, really love meditating with paper. I have a whole video on that, and so um, I will link that down below. I also just found a new spiral notebook on Amazon because this one's almost full. So um, I'll link that below as well. And then you guys do ask me um, what Bible I have. And so my favorite right now is this um, Ascension Presents. It's the Great Adventure Bible. I just really love it. I need to get tabs for it still, but the only downside is it doesn't have a huge margin. So if you're a huge like writer in your, in your Bibles, then you probably need something with a bigger margin. But the font's a nice size and um, I love all the color coding and some of the other things that it has going on. Okay, okay, so I'm so excited. The TV show that I'm recommending is called The Chosen. Now tell me down below if you've already watched The Chosen, if you've binged Jesus, because I know I did, or we did, our whole family did. What you do is you download The Chosen app for free, and then depending on what device you have, like for Roku, you downloaded a channel called VidAngel, and then from your phone, you don't need any special um, equipment, you can cast the episode from your phone to your TV via whatever you know device you have. And it is just, it's hard to put into words the chosen, but what it's doing is it's taking Jesus and it's, per, um, what, is, what does Ryan say? It, pers it makes him personable. He's dancing at the wedding feast at Cana. He's interacting with children. He's interacting with his disciples. It's in common modern speak, but it takes place at the time, you know, traditionally. Jesus, you just fall in love with him. His eyes are so kind. The actor is so good. You, and, and you find yourself meditating on him throughout the day. Just, it's like, the, I saw that. You know, if you have anxiety, especially, watch The Chosen, because you'll see it, and then you'll be like, okay, God, you want to call me home? Go ahead and call me home, because that is the Jesus that I want to spend eternity with. Like, 
they just captured his essence, his humanity and his divinity and his meekness and humility so beautifully. And it's, it's non-denominational. Um, I, I do have to say from a Catholic perspective, I was not happy with how they cast Mary, how they personified Mary. She wasn't bad, but I think that Mary being Catholic and having Marian apparitions and really understanding Mary, I want Mary to be portrayed as without sin, meaning she is just the essence of meekness and humility. She is the perfect creature. So she's not going to be outdone by her friends in kindness or in trust or in temper temperament and just nothing is going to be better than Mary. So far that's been my one criticism. Of course we haven't gotten into John 6 or the Last Supper or any of that, but for now it's just, it's been a very, very beautiful show and I'd love to hear your comments down below about what you think. Our whole family was impacted and um, you can donate money, you don't have to, but it's pretty cool. It's all paid for by other people. So. I was able to watch it because somebody else paid it forward, right? And then at the end, I paid it forward so that like 10 other people could watch it. And you once you once you click on an episode, you have 24 hours to view that episode before it kind of locks itself. Um, I donated $15 and was able to, I think, unlock the entitled, like the digital copy forever. Um, so we can go back and watch it now. It was really, really interesting the way they personified different characters of the Bible and, and merge things together it was, it was very it's just very very well done and but Nicodemus is kind of like the main center of it's besides Jesus obviously of the first season and oh man your heart just goes out to him and it's just the Pharisees seeing them interact with Jesus and seeing the whole political and spiritual dynamics of the time it was just very well done with that, that is just <laughs> some things going on with me in my spiritual life right now. Let me know if you found this video helpful. If you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Um, ring that notification bell. Make sure you actually go in and adjust it so it says every time because I do like to do a lot of live videos. And if you make sure it's like all alerts, then you'll know when I do a live video or maybe if I put something on the community page. If you have specific questions about Marian Doctrine, I think May is going to be mostly Marian doctrine just because it's the month of Mary and I'm getting a lot of Protestants coming up with different arguments against Mary lately just kind of in my in just commenting a lot on class the classic things you know why we worship Mary but also things um, like how should we be born without original sin and some other ones so I'm gonna like really try to do some research and break things down and that's what's gonna happen in May um, but I haven't filmed anything for next week so if you have an idea, let me know. God bless you guys. Have a very, very beautiful Easter octave. We are at Easter people. Easter's 50 days. So keep on celebrating. Enjoy it. Enjoy the joy. I know this time is very weird right now. This is amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Things are weird. Life is strange. It can be easy to get kind of bogged down in the strange and just, just take a deep breath and find the inner joy because Life is good, and Jesus is amazing, and all we have to do is do God's will, and we will get to our eternal reward, God willing, and oh man, I just wanna win the race, right? Okay, guys, God bless, have a very beautiful day. Remember to know God, love God, and do God's will, and I'll talk to you again really soon, bye.